Is Kushahish the Makoni Chiakt Gadina on plowing? Agus is pretty little Venan I Oscar on Urshad and Octo Sheo Comortus Travador of Nature. But every time I come here to the plowing, Sabine and I uh, are marvel at the sheer size, scale, and energy of what is called the plowing. And this year, with the weather, May it hold, <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the numbers will no doubt go up. And it's marvellous to be here at the 86th National Ploughing Championship in Stregan County, Offaly. For the festival is a testament to the vibrancy and the organisational talent that is there in Ireland's farming community. So it's mean lum tris lulub our fad. I want to congratulate and thank our hosts, the neighbouring farmers who have facilitated the transformation of 600 acres of farmland, although I'm told this morning it's nearer to 700, into Ireland's farming capital city. But I think that cooperation is an essential part of rural life. And I think you have created and sustained it in these championships, making it the most important, enjoyable celebration of rural Ireland. Yeah. Rural Ireland in all its aspects. And an annual tribute to those who farm. And to those who are the custodians, because they are farming, of not only our food, but also our society, our landscapes, our natural environment, and our way of life. And it's important to stress that these championships, the ploughing, they're an annual opportunity also for those who have moved to our towns and cities to come back and restore their connection with the rural communities and the land that where none of us are very far from. And I think, Akoja, these days are a celebration and an opportunity, I want to say as well, to take note of the profound role that farmers and farming plays in our society. It's a role that can never be fully understood in the market figures and sales statistics of a, of a sector. These indicators are very important. They may be important indicators, but they don't t fully take into account maybe the importance of farming as a way of life. Above all else, family farming, and it's so good to see people of all ages here, and particularly so many young people. It's something that connects us, all of us, to nature, but it also transfers not only the knowledge of food security and its importance from generation to generation, but also a very valuable lore of understanding that comes from being close to soil, animals, plants. It is a valuable way of life. It needs nurture, it needs support, it needs understanding, it needs good social policies, as well as economic and price interventions. That unbalanced development is leaving us with rural depletion in some parts, and then also, the other side of the coin are urban diseconomies. Two sides of the same coin. Something that affects those who work in agriculture, live in rural Ireland, and make their living on the land, but also it affects the whole of society. Losing infrastructure in rural areas, crowded cities with inadequate services, and social cohesion, which must be the, what we all aim for, not only in Ireland, but in Europe and the world. That means having a balanced economy and society. And that aim, many years ago when I was starting out, was one of the principal reasons why we had a discussion on regionalism and regional planning. In those areas, as current figures suggest, one third of Irish farms were called economically vulnerable. They are not only vulnerable as farms, our society is weakened if they are vulnerable. And rural depopulation has contributed and it's reinforced by the loss of services such as post offices, shops, banks, pubs, restaurants, health services. And all those services in the commercial sector, I ask you as President to remember 
you were sustained over generations by the loyalty of people in the rural areas. And you owe it to continue and enable government to have policies to continue. <laughs> the loss of vibrant, viable rural communities is not inevitable. It's not the result of some natural phenomena presented lazily as some way of the world. The challenges being faced now are the result of choices, large and small, or failures to make choices that have the cumulative effect that I have been describing. There are choices, and there are failures, and there are ours to change. And with political will, ambition, and imagination, it can all be reversed. May I say one of the great successes when I go to bloom or when I come to the ploughing? is the importance now that's attached internationally. And it's going to be very valuable to us as we seek to retain our markets for the agricultural projects. Traceability. But I do want to say this as well. We need traceability not only in the product from food to the, to the, to the kitchen. We need traceability at every stage of production. And we should have traceability about who is adding value at every stage to the, to the retail counter. And if we don't have traceability, I actually looked at a very good study by Keith Kierman, and I think it's worthy of support. We should actually legislate, if necessary, to ensure that there are fair transactions between those who produce, those who purchase for the retail sector, and those who consume. And we always have been an international people. And I want to say to you as President of Ireland that when I travel abroad, the reputation of Ireland is excellent. The friendship extended towards Ireland is always warm and welcome. And next month, Sabina and I will, at the invitation of government, visit Australia and New Zealand. And I have found a willingness and a welcome available for all the meetings that we attend. And these will provide opportunities for producers and exporters and for visitors to our country. They will enable us to highlight our country's histories, the kind of people we are, and to strengthen the economic, tourism, cultural and political links between our peoples. There are 2.5 million Australians, there are 11% of the population, who indicate that they have Irish ancestry. And there are 80,000 Irish-born citizens who have made Australia their home. And I was saying earlier as well, a long time ago in 1862, my grandfather's brother Patrick and his sister Mary Ann emigrated on the Montmorency to go to Queensland. My aunt, my grand aunt was a seamstress, but my grandfather's brother Patrick was a ploughman and is written on the ship's list as a ploughman. And I had to tell Anna Mae McHugh, he won the ploughing championships in Queensland several times in, 19, in the 1862. <laughs> you know, I have been speaking about all the challenges that are facing us. Indeed, all the risks that are there in the Brexit process and all the rest of it. But quite frankly, our time in Europe, when we decided that we wouldn't be dependent on a single market, and new markets were opened up. And that is why we're just not interested only in Brexit. We're interested in the future of Europe. And a Europe that will have security for farm families. And they will be able to make common calls with all those who work and have a relationship to the land in all of the remaining 27 countries. And that is what is important. And this is, I think, no such thing as no reason to be negative. It is time for a new departure. Linking economics, ethics, ecology, social policy, leaving genuinely no one behind and offering things in a sense of solidarity. A Europe of one strong nation is not a real European Union. A union of safe citizens, a union in which everyone has prospects and opportunities to participate is a real union. And that is what Ireland stands for. I think now is not the time to retreat behind national borders or any imagined glorious artificial path. It's the time to renew energy, think afresh, gather our strength, and to build together structures that serve what we value. 
recognizing all that went before us, but also on the Federiki Gonchora Nataam, the endless possibilities that are there. This great collective rural gathering to which so many Alban people come and others who are different ages can meet together. 1700 stands, people from abroad, is a great, great statement of the viability of the Irish people. Agus Gwim Gartragas Banak, Al Gartina Hyokigansha, Tres Limarishi at San Dagarikas of Egobal Gokrua, Colonel Rod Shalkalier, a color falling as Alcoherehe, and a name of Kugasid Sana to a Kaure Lehi. Agus of Orsham, it is such a very great pleasure to have been asked to declare the 86th National Ploughing Championships officially open. Barbanak is Canadian.